So you're building a Ryzen 5000 system, but you're still confused about the memory. What's better for performance? Faster speed, lower latency, both? What about the whole two sticks versus four sticks thing? How much more performance can you expect out of better memory? And does it make sense to spend money to upgrade your memory? Or should you invest in upgrading another component instead? Don't worry, we're gonna go through all of this in a very simple, easy to understand way and give you very specific recommendations at every budget level. Coming right up. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. The Ryzen 5000 platform is unquestionably the best in terms of gaming and workstation performance right now. And we've done a number of videos to support Ryzen 5000 builds, including best motherboards for Ryzen 5000, best coolers for Ryzen 5000, a Ryzen 5600X gaming build, and a Ryzen 5900X 4K gaming slash 4K video editing workstation build. If you missed any of that coverage, I'm gonna put it up right there on the card, there it goes. And you can check it out after this video, because this video is the absolute most requested one I've gotten, which is the best memory for Ryzen 5000. Now I understand, memory is very confusing, doesn't matter if it's Ryzen 5000, Ryzen 3000, Intel, Ryzen, memory's just hard to understand. So we're gonna break this down in a very simple, easy to understand way, as short as we can, to make sure that you walk away from this video understanding exactly what kind of memory you need to get for your build. Of course, that's the goal of this channel. We're a new channel. It's to take all the technical mumbo jumbo, mash it down, and give you the best price or performance in your builds. If that's something that you wanna support, please like the video, subscribe, and click the bell icon. It's an absolutely free way for you to support the channel and to get amazing content. I hope it's amazing. With that, let's jump into it. So very briefly, we're gonna go over the whole two sticks versus four sticks of memory that Gamers Nexus first reported on when Ryzen 5000 launched. It's a super deep topic. So we're just gonna focus today on giving you a functional understanding. You just wanna buy a memory kit, not design them. And if you wanna know more, then I will include links down in the description to some videos that do a deeper dive. So first off, this has to do with single rank versus dual rank, not single channel versus dual channel. That's something very different. So memory rank has to do with how many paths the data can go through at once. So for instance, all modern eight gigabyte sticks of memory are single sided, single rank. That means if you ripped off the heat spreader on them and you looked at the stick itself, you'd see chips on one side of the PCB and the bank backside would be blank. So with only one pathway to go through, these are, you guessed it, single rank sticks. 16 gigabyte and larger memory sticks are almost all double-sided, therefore they're dual rank sticks. There are a handful of single rank 16 gigabyte or larger sticks. Don't worry, you will not end up buying one. Now in terms of performance, dual rank modules have always gotten slightly more performance than single rank modules. The Ryzen 5000 platform has shown a greater advantage to dual rank versus single rank than previous platforms, either Ryzen or Intel. Typically, they yield an average performance boost of about three to 5%, but in some memory sensitive applications, it could be as much as 10%. So how do you get dual rank? So either you're gonna get two sticks of memory that are already dual rank, and that, that's all you need, or you're gonna get four sticks that are single rank, and together they're gonna to work as though they're dual rank. That means it's only realistic to get dual rank on 32 gigs of memory or more, as all eight gigabyte chips are single rank, so if you want 16 gigabytes and get two eight gig chips, that's still, excuse me, sticks, that's still only single rank. And four gigabyte sticks are, they're just gone off the market, so don't even, don't even try looking for four or four gig sticks. They're just gone. So if you wanna take advantage of this, you're either gonna get, again, two 16 gigabyte sticks or larger, or you're gonna get four eight gigabyte sticks. Simple as that. Now it's time to talk about whether or not you're actually gonna see a performance increase from 
faster memory, lower latency memory, and then we'll get into what memory you're gonna want specifically. Well, I've aggregated data from a number of different sources around the web. Tech yes City did one, Optimum Tech did one, uh, Gamers Nexus did, did some stuff, uh, Hardware Canucks just did. Anyway, I've grabbed data from all over the web. I'm gonna give credit to them down in the description below, and I'm gonna include links to all of their videos. And I would strongly recommend if you want more information about this, please take a look at it. What I've done is I've aggregated their data to see what kind of performance increases they were talking about. Now it's important to note in workstation applications, we're talking about anywhere from three to 5%. That's because the main bottleneck in those, when memory is important to an application, some applications don't care at all about the memory speed, really, that that's the only bottleneck is the CPU. The graphics card isn't involved. Gaming is very different. In gaming, you need, your CPU only needs to be as good as maximizing your graphics card. Ryzen 5000 is already a pretty advanced platform. So for the current generation of graphics cards and previous generations, I'm talking about the AMD uh, 5000 series and the NVIDIA 2000 series, for the older generation graphics cards, forget it. You don't need faster memory. You could get away with DDR4 3200CL16 memory and get just about every frame out of, out of your graphics card. So this is also only pertains to graphics cards that are trying to render huge amounts of frame rates, usually in 1080p performance. So this is situations where you're gonna be CPU bound, not GPU bound. If you go up in resolution to 1440p or 4K, forget about it. The memory stop, stops mattering because the bottleneck isn't the CPU and the memory, the bottleneck's the graphics card. So this is actually for gaming, there's only a really narrow window where it really matters what kind of memory you need to get. And that is if you are playing super high 1080p frame rate games with a 3080 or higher graphics card or a AMD 6800 XT or higher graphics card. That's really it. And again, 1080p, once you bump that up to 1440 or up to uh, 4K, forget about it. The graphics card's now your bottleneck. The memory speed isn't gonna matter at all. And when it does matter, it's only mattering three to 7%, again, at 1080p. Just to underscore the gaming performance part of it, I wanna show you a little bit of the TechSpot article that uh, Steve from Hardware Unbox wrote. So you can see right here, we're looking at Shadow of the Tomb Ra Raider. Again, we're talking about 1080p gaming. He's using an RTX 3090. And the differences he's seeing from DDR4 3200CL16, right here, he gets 170 FPS, to the best tune memory, which ended up being DDR4 3800CL16. Uh, this is a, a manual tune. He got 179 FPS. That's a nine FPS difference. That's five and a half percent. Using an RTX 3090 at 1080p, who games on a 3090 at 1080p? You would, that's a 1440p card. So if you look at just a slightly lower performance, not slightly lower, if you look at a lower performance graphics card, like a 2070, for instance, you'll see that the, the frame rates are virtually identical all the way down. Hitman 2, doesn't matter what you pull out here. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, they're all the same. Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1440p, they're all the same. I just want to underscore, if you're a gamer, the only difference you're really going to see, and it's going to be a couple of percent, three to five percent, is if you are using one of these super high-end graphics cards and you are gaming at 1080p. So what's happening there is you're creating a bottleneck at the CPU rather than at the GPU. Once you go up resolution, or if you have a less powerful graphics card, the GPU becomes your bottleneck and then the memory speed doesn't really matter anymore because Ryzen 5000 is a very powerful platform. It can already get a lot out of your graphics card without having to have super high tuned memory. So just wanna emphasize that point, showing some graphs here. What are the technical limitations you might run into buying higher speed memory? Number one, if you're on an older platform, B450 or X470, and you're just getting those BIOS updates and you're, you can't wait to install your Ryzen 5000 CPU, 
don't think that you can necessarily run some of this faster speed memory at those advertised speeds. You may have to downclock it. So it may not make any sense for you to go out and buy DDR4-4000 memory uh, when you're gonna need to downclock it to 3600 anyway. Save yourself the money, go out and buy a 3600 kit. But look at what your motherboard's gonna be able to support. Secondly, uh, this is for everybody, the Infinity Fabric for Ryzen 5000, if you look at the memory topologies we've got right here, connects everything together. Think of it that way. And the Infinity Fabric can run at a maximum clock of 2000 megahertz. So that translates into 4000 mega transfer memory. So when we say DDR4, that's double data rate memory, DDR4-4000, that memory is running at 2000 megahertz times two is 4000. That's how we go get to from 2000 megahertz where it's actually, that's the clock it's running at, to the 4000 speed that we often refer to. I won't bore you to death with the details on that one. But you need that infinity fabric and your memory to run at that same speed. So right now, for whatever reason, even with the latest BIOS updates, folks are having a hard time hitting 2000 megahertz on the Infinity Fabric. So they're not able to run DDR4-4000 memory at a one-to-one -one ratio right now. So they're downclocking their memory. If you're gonna downclock your memory, you might as well buy cheaper memory in the first place, right? So that's just another thing to think about. I do expect AMD is gonna iron this out at some point. However, they just haven't yet. So, and we're a couple months into the launch at this point. Now let's go over to thinking about what are the actual memory recommendations we're gonna make. All right, let's consider the memory market now because this is probably where most of you will actually have to make a decision because you have this thing called a budget. <laughs> and whatever you spend on your memory, maybe you can squeeze, you know, maybe you can up your budget a little bit. Um, there's probably three kinds of people, right? There's the people who are just gonna spend whatever it takes to spend because they got the money and they're they're dedicated to it. Then there's people who are a little bit more in the middle and those folks, you know, they don't mind stretching their budget a little bit if it's gonna get them some performance. And then you got folks who, if they're gonna spend more money on the memory, it's gonna come out of something else in the system. They're not, their budget is not really fungible. Then of course you got all the folks who are just watching this video either for fun or they're just thinking about building right now and they're not even considering their budget but let's consider budget. If you want that three to 5% uh, that we've been talking about and you don't have any objection to spending whatever it takes, DDR4-4000 CL16 memory is available, dual rank, that means 32 gigabyte kit for $270. I'll go actually through the kits themselves. There will be links down in the description. You don't have to write all this down. I will put the I will list all the timings and the speeds on, um, with the links themselves. But let's take a look at the overall cost. So if we assume our system is gonna cost about $1,500. Now, if your system costs more, adjust. If we assume this is a $1,500 system because we're putting a 3080 Ti in it, maybe we've got a Ryzen 5600X, that is 11% the difference between DDR4-3200 at that same speed, uh, CL16, excuse me, and the 4,000 speed memory, that's $160. That's 11% of our overall system is just gonna go into stepping up that memory for that three to 5%. Well, what could you do with 160 bucks? Instead, you could, uh, again, if you unlimited budget, you don't care about this, but for the folks who are more in the middle or on the end of this, you could get a better graphics card. You could go from a 3060 Ti to a 3070. You might be able to stretch from a 3070 to a 3080. You might be able to stretch from a 3070 to a, you know, a RX 6800 XT. Consider what you might be able to get in place of that. You might be able to get more storage. You might be able to get a better case. You might be able to add a whole bunch of cool RGB to it. So consider the size of the increase, again, three to 5% with the size of the cost. Now let's go through these kits and I'll, rec I'll jump through each kit and I'll make recommendations for every budget level. So let's start with you 3% out there who just, you got the money, you're dedicated to just getting the best, you don't care uh, in terms of you know price to performance, you just want performance, period. Here you go, 16 gigabytes, G-Skills Rip Jaws, DDR4-4000 CL16. At Newegg, $134 for 16 gigabytes. Now, remember, you won't get this as, um, 
dual rank. So if you want dual rank, you're gonna to need to jump up. Now you can either just go ahead and buy two of these kits, that'd be $168, or you can buy, that would give you four eight gigabyte sticks, or you can buy this kit, which is two 16 gigabyte sticks for $270. To me, that's more money than I care to spend on memory. And I think that's probably, but again, this is for the 3%. Now let's jump down to the kind of more middle range. People who might be thinking about stretching their budget a little bit in order to grab a little bit of performance. DDR4 3600 CL16 memory. Now this is a 32 gigabyte kit because again, we're gonna get the dual channel on this, uh, excuse me, the dual, uh, the dual rank, see, see how easy that is? For $160, $155 here. That's not a bad price whatsoever for 32 gigs at this speed, at this latency. And because it's much better memory, you may even be able to tighten these timings up further. Again, we're just talking about dumping something in its stock. For those of you who are gonna tighten timings up, the better memory you get, the easier it is to do that. Similarly, if you don't, if that's a little too rich for your blood, but you still wanna get slightly faster memory, you can get a kit more like the DDR4 3600 CL18. And you may be able to tighten these timings up to CL16 for only 120 bucks. So you can see as you step down, you're going less and less and less. Now, frankly, for those of you who just want the base level of performance and you don't really care about stretching your budget, you just have to hit something and you're thinking, well, maybe I should spend the money on my graphics card instead. There is absolutely nothing wrong with getting a 16 or 32 gigabyte kit that's DDR4 3200 CL16, just like the kit I'm looking at right here at Amazon for $110 for 32 gigs of memory. That's a great price. Comes in a bunch of different colors. This is a teen group module. And again, if you just want 16 gigs of memory at that same speed, 60 bucks is all it takes. Uh, here's a Team Force Vulcan one. I never know how to say these folks. I know it's supposed to be YOLO. I always read it as Oloy. <laughs> I can't help myself. So I'll list these out, but I would say the sweet spot is for folks who are super budget constrained, don't think twice about getting DDR4 3200 CL16 memory either 16 gigs or 32 gigs, you're not gonna see a huge difference. Spend the money in other places. For those of you who are already spending the money in other places and you don't mind spending another, you know, three to 5% of your overall budget on the memory to get maybe a little bit less performance than that, DDR4 3600 CL16 is where you're at. And for those of you who just don't care about budget, you got the money, DDR4 4000 memory, you might have some challenges getting the timings, but I'm gonna get, I'm guessing you're also buying a very nice motherboard where you're not gonna have any of those issues. So that's probably where you wanna end up. And again, links to all these are gonna be down in the description. That's the video. If you got value out of it, please remember to give it a like. And of course, if you enjoy this kind of content and you wanna support it, we're a new channel, please remember to subscribe and click the bell icon. I just wanted to say thank you so much to everybody because we are about to hit 5,000 subscribers as I film this video. Um, man, a couple months ago, I couldn't even imagine hitting 5,000. So just really, really amazing. Want to thank everybody again. And with that, I will catch you on the next one.